who doesn't know the story of Winnie the Pooh? The question is, do you know the real one? Stay tuned to find out more about the pretty disturbing story of the real Winnie the Pooh. Don't forget to hit that notification bell to never miss another video. And be sure to check out our community section for even more fun. Now let's check out the real story of Winnie the Pooh. The first story. The truth is, there are two disturbing Winnie the Pooh stories out there. One is the author's family story, and the other is the actual story, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. A. A. Milne, the man that wrote the beloved Winnie the Pooh books, created the fairy tale world based on his son's stuffed animals. You can actually see what Christopher's toys looks like in real life, which is pretty amazing. The inspiration came at an extremely difficult time during the World War, but many don't realize that his story is actually quite an unfortunate one, despite the very fortunate success of Winnie the Pooh books. Milne served as an officer in both world wars, and it was quite a miracle these books even exist, considering everything he went through. Unfortunately, Milne suffered from a post-traumatic stress order, which made him move to a quiet and peaceful area just outside of London, UK. Milne later found passion in writing and got inspired by his son's Christopher Robin stuffed animals. One of those animals was a teddy bear called Edward. Ha! You expected the name Winnie, didn't you? We'll talk more about that in the second part of this video. Christopher Robin later had his own very much beloved character in the popular Winnie the Pooh books and became somewhat of an icon in the literary world. But this seemed to only bring more trouble as he got relentlessly teased by his peers. Despite the fact that Christopher's relationship with his father improved, when his father decided to stop writing the books, he revealed his past was quite troubled. In a rare interview, he stated that his father's creation of Winnie the Pooh books left him with nothing but the empty fame of being his son. The popularity of the books put an immense restraint on Christopher's relationship with his father, and he stated that his parents just didn't know how to take care of kids. In fact, Christopher was raised by his nanny and practically lived with her in a nursery on the top floor of the house. Years after Winnie the Pooh books came to an end, Christopher estranged himself from his parents in order to find his true identity. For the longest time, he despised Winnie the Pooh books and even refused to accept any money from its profits. It seems that his childhood fame as the Christopher Robin character put a lot of restraint on his family as he watched his father pay more attention to the books than himself. Christopher passed away regretting the four 70,000 word long books overshadowed the rest of his life. You can find out more about the family's life story in a movie called Goodbye Christopher Robin. While Winnie the Pooh might come with tons of beautiful and inspiring quotes, it seems like the books brought many hardships to the family that struggled to deal with fame. The second story. That was the unfortunate story of the restraint the books put on the author's family. But wait, there's more. So we now know Winnie the Pooh characters were inspired by Christopher Robin's stuffed animal collection. One of those stuffed animals was known as Winnipeg, which was actually inspired by a real life bear. Winnipeg, aka Winnie, was a Canadian bear. It was bought for $20 by Harry the Lieutenant. Winnie's mother's life ended with a hunter's bullet. After being bought, Winnie quickly became the unofficial master mascot of the Young Soldiers Regiment. And yes, in case you're wondering, Winnie is actually a female bear, and she actually fought in the First World War. Well, sort of. Harry actually hid Winnie on a ship when he was shipped out to England to fight. She didn't actually fight in the war itself, but she was there as a mascot to boost morale, just like many other animals. After realizing that Winnie really shouldn't fight in the war, Harry made the ultimate decision and took Winnie to the London Zoo. He asked them to take care of her while he went and fought in the war. He he intended on coming back to her after the war was over, but after seeing that Winnie was being well taken care of at the zoo, he decided to leave her there. And that's when Winnie first met Christopher Robin. A. A. Milne, the author of Winnie the Pooh books, used to take young Christopher to the zoo, and Winnie was his favorite animal. So even though Winnie the Pooh is a kind character and always comes with a life lesson and plenty of quotes, the real Winnie actually had a painful past. First, her mother passed away, which resulted in her participating in war, and eventually being taken to the zoo. But even the real version of Winnie was just as friendly as the literary version. Winnie befriended the lieutenant, and she befriended the boy and his father, who technically introduced her to the entire world. That's pretty remarkable, isn't it? You can actually find the lieutenant's diary entry stating exactly when he bought Winnie for $20. It was August 24, 1914. Wendy stayed at the London Zoo and lived for over 20 years, which is remarkably long for a black bear. She was the only bear that the zoo trusted with kids. 
Christopher was even able to cuddle and play with her. After Winnie's passing, the zoo made sure she's not forgotten. Even though her character will forever live in a literary form, the zoo also paid a tribute to this remarkable bear. London Zoo actually holds a statue of Winnie and Lieutenant Harry holding hands, as well as another statue of just Winnie the bear. Which part of this story was the most surprising? Did you know Winnie was a real-life bear? Or that the success of Winnie the Pooh brought an unfortunate restraint on the author's family? Come let us know what you think in the comments. And that's it for our video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.